midpoint formula and distance formula. First, let's talk about the midpoint formula. We define what a midpoint is, and it's the point exactly in the middle, but right now, we're gonna focus on the coordinate plane. So, on the coordinate plane, obviously we're dealing with coordinate points. So, what the information you'll be given is the x and y coordinate of point A, and the x and y coordinate of point B, the two points. Now we need to find the point that's exactly in the middle. You don't want to eyeball, you don't want to use a ruler to measure it out, but we're going to calculate this algebraically. So we're going to take the information we have, x coordinates and y coordinates, and find the middle. So first let's focus on the x coordinates. When you take the x coordinate of point A and the x coordinate of point B, the way that we can find the middle between those is the way that you would average two numbers. You add them and divide by two. That gives you the exact middle between those two x values. We're gonna take that same idea with the y coordinates. Take the y coordinate of point A and the y coordinate of point B, and then we're gonna add those, divide it by two to find the exact middle. Now those two will line up to a point, and that is going to be your midpoint. So. If A and B are points in a coordinate plane, then the midpoint of segment AB has coordinates like this. So your final answer is going to be a coordinate point, the x-coordinate of the midpoint and the y-coordinate of the midpoint, the same way you see these coordinate points listed. And the way you find that is x1 plus, y, or x1 plus x2 divided by 2. So this will give you the x-coordinate of the midpoint. y1 plus y2 divided by 2 will give you the y-coordinate of the midpoint. So let's do a little bit of practice. We're going to take the information given and find the coordinates of the midpoint of segment AB. So we have our formula. Remember xm, ym equals x2 or x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and then y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Okay. So let's plug in. It doesn't matter which one's point 1 and which one's point 2. So we're going to take the two x coordinates and add them. Negative 2 plus 4 and we want to divide those by 2 and we want to take the y-coordinates and add them, 4 plus 0, and divide that by 2. Now, it's just some algebra work. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2. 4 plus 0 is 4. Now our last step, 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And this is our final answer. So if we were to plot that point, x coordinate 1, y coordinate 2, this would be our midpoint. So go ahead and pause, try the second example, and check back with me when you've finished. So using the same formula, hopefully you found that the midpoint has coordinates 1, 1, and if you pay close attention to this graph, it shows you that each grid point is actually counting by two. So if you want to plot it, you need to go half over, half up, and that's going to be your midpoint. Now the midpoint formula is not on the SOL formula sheet, so you need to make sure that you memorize this, okay? Here are a couple more examples, and these are slightly different. This one says that S is the midpoint of RT. Given points S and T, find the coordinates of endpoint R. So this time, I don't give you the two endpoints and ask you to find the midpoint. I'm actually giving you the midpoint and one endpoint, and you need to find the other endpoint. So I'm just going to draw this diagram. This is not correct because, like we said, we are talking about the coordinate plane, but this is just going to help give us an idea and just kind of plot our thoughts. Okay. So. It says S is the midpoint of segment RT. So here's the idea. And then we have point S has coordinates 6, 2. And then point T has coordinates 
to 0. So we actually need to find the x and y coordinate of point R. Now, just for a reminder, let's bring back our formula for the midpoint. x of the m, y of the m is equal to x1 plus x2 divided by 2, and then y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Now, let's talk about how we actually found the answers. Remember, we said x1 plus x2 divided by 2 gives us the x-coordinate of the midpoint. And then y1 plus y2 divided by 2 gives us the y-coordinate of the midpoint. So I just want to break this up one at a time. And I'm going to write this equation. The x-coordinate of the midpoint is equal to x1 plus x2 divided by 2. Likewise, the y-coordinate of the midpoint is going to be y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Now if we separate it this way, then we'll be able to solve for the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate for r separately. So we want to take the x-coordinate of the midpoint, which is 6. The x1, we actually don't know, so we're going to leave that as a variable x2 is our coordinate point 2, and then we want to divide that by 2. So let's solve this equation. We need to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of this fraction. So on this side we have 12 equal to x1 plus 2. And then to solve for x1, we want to subtract 2 from both sides, and we get 10 is equal to x1. Now, let's solve for the y-coordinate. The y-coordinate of the midpoint is going to be 2. y1 is the y-coordinate of r, which we don't know, so we'll leave that as a variable. y2 is our 0 divided by 2. And again, we need to solve for y1. Multiply both sides by 2, so we get 4 is equal to y1 plus 0. We don't need to subtract 0, so we just get 4 is equal to y1. Now our final answer is going to be the coordinate point r, that end point, with x coordinate of 10 and y coordinate of 4. So it does take a little extra work, but if you kind of understand the idea of what is happening, that you have the midpoint and an end point and you need to find the other end point, you can use the midpoint formula in two different parts to find the x and y coordinate. So go ahead and press pause, try this next example, and check back with me when you're done. Hopefully you found that the coordinates for z are 14 and negative 24. If that's not what you got, go ahead and pause, check your work with mine, and see where you might have made a mistake. Next we want to talk about the distance formula. So this is different from the distance we talked about before. Right now, again, we're back on the coordinate plane, so we are dealing with a coordinate point A and a coordinate point B. Now, again, we do want to use the difference, um, the change in the x's, and we do want to use the change in the y's. So we're actually going to end up creating this other imaginary point C using the change in the x and the change in the y. Now. When we talk about the change in the x's, we want to talk the, about the distance, so it's the absolute value of the two x-coordinates subtracted, and the distance of the y's, the absolute value of the two y-coordinates subtracted. So if we have a point A and a point B on the coordinate plane, the distance between A and B is represented by this formula. Now again, this is another formula that is not given on the SOL formula sheet, so you do want to take some time to memorize this before your test. We have the length of AB is going to be equal to the square root of the distance of the x's, x2 minus x1 squared, plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now we're going to put this in action with a couple examples. For this very first one, 
we want to find the length of AB. So remember the distance formula. AB is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And again, it doesn't really matter which one is the first point and which one's the second point, okay? So we're gonna find AB. We're gonna take the big square root and the x2 minus x1. So four minus negative two. Remember that subtraction is in the formula. So if you have a negative number, you also need a negative for that. And then plus zero minus four squared. So remember, minus a negative becomes plus a positive. Oops, forgot that parenthesis. So four plus two gives us six. Zero minus four gives us negative four. Now we wanna square those. Six squared is 36. And then negative four squared. Remember, that's negative four times negative four. So you should actually get a positive 16. Now when you're down to two numbers being added together under the radical and distance formula, those two numbers should always be positive. So if you have a negative, you need to go back and check your work because you made a mistake somewhere. So now we add 36 and 16 to get 52. And then there are two ways to represent our answer. The first is simplifying the radical. So you should remember this from Algebra 1. We want to break down this radical. So 52, you can divide that by 2, and then you're left with 26. And we want to keep breaking this down until we have primes. So 2 is a prime. 26 is an even number, so you can divide it by 2, and then you're left with 13. So these are all prime numbers. Now that we're down to primes, remember you need a buddy that looks just like you. So two and two, one of them will get out, the other one doesn't make it, and 13 is stuck under the radical. So this is your final answer. The distance, or the length of segment AB is two radical 13. Now the other way you can give your answer is just to put it in the calculator. So if you take the square root of 52 and plug that into your calculator, you'll actually get an approximated answer of 7.2. I will accept both answers for now, um, but know that if it's a multiple choice question, the answer might only be given in one way or the other. So you need to know how to find the other answer. So why don't you go ahead and pause, try the second example and check back with me when you're finished. When you work the second problem out, you should have gotten an answer of 10. So this one, you didn't need to simplify the radical because if you put this into the calculator, you actually get 10. You should also remember some of your perfect squares. So hopefully you did remember without the calculator that the square root of 100 is 10. Next, we wanna talk about the Pythagorean theorem. Now you should have learned this before, but we'll just talk about it as a little refresher over here on this left side, and you don't need to recopy this, but this is just um, the distance formula repeated over here. So you already have this written down, but we have the coordinate A, B, and remember that imaginary coordinate C, with the distance of the X coordinates, the distance in the Y coordinates from the two points. Now, when we have that imaginary point C, we actually have a right angle created here, and we have this right triangle. So I just wanna show you, because the Pythagorean theorem is dealing with right triangles, not necessarily on the coordinate plane. So here I just have this plain right triangle, but I'm showing you the two sides that make the right angle. Those are called legs, and generally those are labeled A and B. And then the side that's opposite from the right angle is called the hypotenuse, and that one's labeled C. So we wanna take the distance formula and convert it into a formula that we can use for any triangle that's not necessarily on the coordinate plane. So the first thing I'm gonna do is square both sides so that we get rid of that big radical, and so this becomes the length of AB squared. 
Then next, I want to substitute x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1 with the actual segment lengths using our point C. So x2 minus x1, that's actually segment AC. And then y2 minus y1, that's segment BC. So I'm going to take this equation, and then we're going to convert it over to the things we see here. So first, I'm just going to flip the equation around. And then the two sides, the legs, we have the leg AC squared and the leg BC squared equal to the hypotenuse AB squared. And then we're just going to take these variables for the sides and replace that to get A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So the Pythagorean theorem is going to help you find measurements of the sides of a right triangle. Now let's do a couple examples. Here we have the sides of a rectangle are 3 centimeters and 4 centimeters and it asks us to find the length of the diagonal. Now you should remember that a rectangle has four 90 degree angles so this here is a right triangle. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now remember the two legs the sides that make up the right triangle are a and b. It doesn't matter which one's which. The only important thing is you need to remember that the hypotenuse, the side opposite from the right angle, is always C. So I'm going to substitute in our values into our formula here. A is 3, B is 4, and C is our X. Now we want to solve this for X. So before we can get rid of that squared, we need to simplify this side. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, equal to x squared. 9 plus 16 is 25, that equals x squared. And if you remember from Algebra 1, the way you get rid of a squared is you want to take the square root of both sides. Those cancel out, so you're just left with x. The square root of 25 is 5. So the length of the diagonal, formally you would write your answer 5 centimeters. This would really be your final answer. So why don't you go ahead and pause, try the second example. You're going to need to draw a diagram for yourself. But go ahead and try this and check back with me when you finish. Now your diagram, your triangle could be turned differently, but it should look something similar to this. Make sure you always mark your right angle when you're dealing with right triangles. So one of the legs is four inches and it tells us the hypotenuse, so the side that's opposite from the right angle, that's 10 inches. Then we need to find the other length, so I labeled that one with X. So when we put that into the Pythagorean theorem, the leg four squared plus the other leg X squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So when you solve this, now we talked about what happens when a radical turns into a decimal. When we put square root of 84 into the calculator, you get 9.2 approximately. Now you could give this answer as a radical, except with real world problems, you want to make sure that your answers actually make sense. You would never go to Home Depot and ask them to cut something that is 2 root 21 inches long. It just doesn't really make sense. So with this problem, it would make more sense to give it as a decimal answer, okay? That's all for today. Remember to submit any questions you have on the website, and I'll see you in class.